So today class will be given by His Grace uh, Chakravarti Prabhuji on the topic of Srimad Bhagavatam, 4th Canto, 8th Chapter, 57th verse onwards. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, are you present on the call? Yes, Mataji, I am there. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Dhanavach Pranam Algo, Mr. Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much, Prabhu, for giving your valuable time and association to us this morning and enlightening us on the topic Srimad Bhagavatam. I'll hand out the call to you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So today we are discussing from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter 8. Dhruva Maharaj leaves home for the forest. Text 57. So I'll just recite the text, read the translation and purport, then read the Mangala Charan and start the discussion. Svechavatara charitayat achintya nijamayaya karishyati uttama shlokas tadhyaye dhidam gamam <coughs> dhidam gamam Translation My dear Dhruva, besides worshipping the deity and chanting the mantra three times a day, You should meditate upon the transcendental activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in His different incarnations as exhibited by His Supreme Will and Personal Potencies. Purport Devotional service comprises nine prescribed practices hearing, chanting, remembering, worshipping, serving, offering everything to the deity, etc. Here, Dhruva Maharaj is advised not only to meditate on the form of the Lord, but to think of his transcendental pastimes in his different incarnations. Mayavadi philosophers state the incarnation of the Lord to be in the same category as the ordinary living entity. This is a great mistake. The incarnation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is not forced to act by the material laws of nature. The word Swetcha is used here to indicate that he appears out of his supreme will. The conditioned soul is forced to accept a particular type of body according to his karma given by the laws of material nature under the direction of the Supreme Lord. But when the Lord appears, he is not forced by the dictation of material nature. He appears as he likes by his own internal potency. The purpose is little long, so I would request you may need to focus and put little more concentration. But when the Lord appears, he is not forced by the dictation of material nature. He appears as he likes by his own internal potency. That is the difference. The conditioned soul accepts a particular type of body, such as body of a hog, by his work and by superior authority of material nature. But when Lord Krishna appears in the incarnation of a bull, he is not the same kind of hog as an ordinary animal. Krishna appears as Varaha Avatar in an expansive feature which cannot be compared to an ordinary hog. His appearance and disappearance are inconceivable to us. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is clearly said that he appears by his own internal potency (coughs) for the protection of the devotees and annihilation of the non-devotees. A devotee should always consider that Krishna does not appear as an ordinary human being or ordinary beast. His appearance as Varaha Murti or a horse or tortoise is an exhibition of his internal potency. In the Brahma Samhita it is said, Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pratibhavita Abhi. One should not mistake the appearance of Lord as a human being or a beast to the same, to be the same as birth of an ordinary conditioned soul, who is forced to appear by laws of nature, whether as an animal, as a human being or as a demigod. This kind of thinking is offensive. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had condemned the Mayavadi as offensive to the Supreme Personality of Godhead because of their thinking that Lord and the conditioned living entities 
are one and the same. Narada advises Dhruva to meditate on the past tense of the Lord, which is as as good as meditation of concentrating one's mind on the form of the Lord. As meditation on any form of Lord is valuable, so is chanting of different names of the Lord, such as Hari, Govinda, and Narayan. But in this age, we are especially advised to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, as enunciated in the Shastra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Jnana Anjana Shalataya Chakshuran Militam Jena Tasme Shri Guru Venama Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Tapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Vidati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sadrajatam Sahagana Raghunatham Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvetam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Pada Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakha Vitamsya Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pishthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesh Shunyavadi Pashata Deshatarine Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Inamine Gauratu Shenamaha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanjana Gaurangi Radha Vrindavaneshwari Prishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Haritya Vancha Kalpataru Vishakrapa Sindhu Vyayavacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namamaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shriva Sadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna So we are continuing this discussion on how Dhruva being uh, insulted by stepmother becomes very angry and goes to his mother and then eventually leaves the house go to forest the purpose of going to forest is to find Lord Vishnu so that he can ask the greatest kingdom in the entire universe much greater than Lord Brahma's kingdom from Lord Vishnu because if the kingdom has to be bigger than Lord Brahma's kingdom the person who can reward this kind of kingdom has to be bigger than Lord Brahma. Anyone bigger than Brahma in the universe is Vishnu. So it's very logical that Dhruva goes to Vishnu. He's not, he, he was not a devotee that time. But it's a, it's a logical understanding, okay, Vishnu can give, okay, let me go. And Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Chatur Veda Bhajante Maam Guna Sakrita Na Arjuna Artho Arthati Jigyasu Jnani Cha Bharata Arshaba Said Arjun, four kinds of pious people they come to me. And there are four kinds of impious people who don't come to me. So out of these four pious people, even if you want money, you want relief from stress or distress condition, come to Krishna. And Krishna says, they are magnanimous souls. They are coming to me. And our Acharyas, and especially Srila Prabhupada, preaching to the people of Kali, most degraded population, he has told so many times, even if you want material benefit, you come to Krishna. Why we should go to anyone else? A wife or a child, whatever they want, Wife. wife will come to her husband and she will not go to neighbor. She is a chaste wife. A child will not go to any other, fa- other, but he will go to his own father if he wants anything. 
So Prabhupada says, even if you have material desire, come to Krishna. You are a pious soul. So in India, we see so many thousands of people, they come to temples. Thousands. Here in Iskhan Juhu, we have like you know, more than 10,000 every day. And on weekends goes to 50,000, 60,000, 70,000 per day. So many people are coming. So they are pious souls. They may come with any desire, but they are coming to Krishna. So this is why Dhruva goes to Vishnu. He is directed by his mother to go to Vishnu. And on the way he meets Narada Muni and Narada Muni is testing Dhruva. And finally when Dhruva passed the test, he is given this uh, process to practice Krishna consciousness. And in the process he gives, uh, Narada gives him mantra and then he says about the form of the Lord. The Lord. Means deity worship. Now, in today's verse, Narada Muni is saying, you worship deity and also chant mantra three times a day. This three times a day, mantra in scriptures means Gayatri. That is why. Gayatri we chant uh, three sandhyam, yashyas three sandhyam. So, this uh, three sandhyam means three times when the sun is moving from one, you know, and the one place to another place, the movement happens of sun, that is called Sandhya. So three times. But then he is saying, apart from that what you do is meditate on the past times of the Lord. And then our Srila Prabhupada has always, he knows that people of Kali Yuga cannot even meditate on past times. So what they can do is What they can do is uh, chant Hare Krishna. That's why in the end, Prabhupada says. So we'll discuss what Prabhupada is telling in the first paragraph. He talks about Krishna's appearance and birth of ordinary soul. So when Krishna appears, he appears Swetcha Avatara, Swetcha according to his own sweet, independent will, he appears. Now whether he appears in the form of a boar, or a horse, or a tortoise, or even a microbe. Because Prabhupada says Krishna is appearing in all the species. So Krishna may appear somewhere in microbe, someone in vegetable also. Krishna appears. Now, because the factor is the factor which is important is own will. This is not important which form. Krishna has his original form of Sham Sundar. But he can take any of the forms. If he can create forms for living entities, why he cannot create form for himself? So when Krishna was in Dwarka and uh, he wanted to wind up his Leela. So this hunter Jara, he hits, uh, he shoots an arrow which comes and hits Krishna's thumb and Krishna leaves the body there and he goes back. So Krishna left one body there. So Prabhupada is saying, what is so? So Mayavadi says, see, Krishna is also in Maya. That is why Krishna has to leave this body. So Prabhupada says that these foolish people are talking like this but they do not know if Krishna can create millions and billions of bodies for conditioned soul can he not create one body for himself? It's like a tailor is stitching clothes for so many people will he not stitch one cloth for himself? Can he not do that? So Krishna created one material body and left it there looks like him so as to bewilder the demoniac people further. Krishna does that. Now, that also is the important factor is Krishna does by his own will. This is very important. 
any conditioned soul cannot do anything by his own will what to talk of taking birth and deciding the time and moment of death even if someone will say okay some freedom i have i'm doing something i have the freedom i can commit suicide that also krishna's intervention is required and then after one commits suicide because it's a sinful activity it's a crime so then he'll be punished in next life but birth nobody in the world can say i can control my birth you may take birth in a family of a beggar or you may take birth in the family of president of america doesn't matter you cannot control your own birth you are given birth based on our own previous actions karmana and devanatrena by the intervention of rob as is a higher material uh, energy so we are given birth a soul is given birth but he does not know what kind of body he will get he will get human being the body of a man or a woman american or indian or african or animal or birds or reptiles or microbes he cannot control nobody can decide who will be my father in next birth who will be my mother in next birth but krishna can that is why lord kalki who is supposed to appear after 427000 years 427000 years from today will lord kalki appear and his father name is already mentioned so krishna has already decided who will be my father now who can do that so this is a major difference we'll talk about the form also <clears throat> but prop is talking about here that krishna does everything on his own will and condition soul does not or cannot do anything on his own will this is what we have to understand so krishna's will krishna is called satya sankalpa is one of the name is satya sankalpa so when krishna thinks of something he just gives a thought and that happens like even in bible it is says jesus said huh? lord said there let there be light so there was light let there be you know the universe creation it was there even in scripture krishna just have to think and the creation will take this that is satya whatever he says or he desires that happens he does not even have to say he just have to desire so krishna or any incarnation of krishna just by desire the things manifest now the uh, devotees in the spiritual world they also desire and things happen in spiritual world if you go and uh, i haven't i haven't been to spiritual world but i have read in the scriptures so it is mentioned that you know if a devotee desires to serve krishna and he wants to uh, give mango fruit ripe fresh sweet uh, mango fruit to krishna and he goes to any tree any tree doesn't matter whether it's a mango tree or a or a coconut tree the tree if that devotee desires to serve krishna that tree will give mango so does that mean that devotee in spiritual world are also having same power as krishna no not in tattva in rasa devotees are bigger than krishna like shrimati radharani no she has upper edge but in tattva devotee is a servant of krishna so when a devotee is devotee is so dear to krishna is so dear that when they desire anything krishna intervenes and immediately fulfill their desires 
immediately so that kind of independence or power is given to devotees so the prabhupada writes in first canto of shrimad bhagavatam that krishna is supremely independent krishna is supremely independent and krishna's devotees are supremely independent in executing the will of krishna krishna's devotees krishna is supremely independent and krishna's devotees are also supremely independent why they are supremely independent in executing the will of krishna like shri prabhupada supremely independent he he showed he exhibited his behavior whatever he wanted he did nobody can stop him nobody could stop him and whatever we see the obstacles and all that that was a part of leela leela for shri prabhupada and teaching for us whatever happens in the life of pandavas it was leela for them teaching for us prabhupada didn't undergo any pain prabhupada said i can never be touched by maya maya cannot touch prabhupada the prabhupada cannot experience any pain whatever he exhibited that is for our teaching and whatever pain he exhibited that is his compassion pure devotee and krishna they only have pain of compassion when they see conditioned souls uh, bahir mukha jeeva the conditioned soul who are going away from krishna or not turning face towards krishna then a pure devotee has pain in their heart so this is the situation now let us see the situation of a conditioned soul in the material world so conditioned soul also desires that is the only one thing a living entity has is desire whatever we have in our possession is our desire and based on our own desire we will proceed so but in material world what happens when we desire something doesn't get fulfilled sometimes it get fulfilled and that a condition soul thinks that because i desired and i worked hard with my all intelligence and capacity and ability and talent and skills that is where the result came this is the bigger illusion when a living entity he achieves something in a material world he thinks it is my own achievement so when he desires even sometimes the desires are manipulated by the modes like you will not find a beggar on the streets in small villages having the desire to go and study in mit or having the desire to go and uh, go on the moon whereas astronauts who have studied they can they have the desire to go to the moon so even desires of a living entity are kind of directed as per the modes and these modes he has acquired because of his own previous karma to very subtle science it's very uh, it's very bewildering even to understand it's not very easy to understand these things what we desire is also based on you know previous actions or you have to have that sukriti to desire something but even if he desires 
the living entity he desires it cannot be fulfilled because he is not independent hmm? you remember we use this word supremely independent for krishna and we use this word supremely independent for devotees who are pure devotees the devotees in the spiritual world and pure devotees who come to this world to preach rest all of us are not independent what to talk about using this word called supremely independent we are not independent at all proper says little bit freedom is no freedom little independence is no independence so we don't have any independence this is the difference so a person who has taken birth a, a soul who has taken birth as a hog and krishna appearing as varaha dev there's a difference the difference the two difference definitely we are, we'll discuss about the form one is spiritual one is material but we are talking about krishna is appearing on his own will and that's why krishna says janma karma cha me divyam because i appear on my own will so my birth is transcendental because nobody in the creation appears on his own will only krishna and whatever actions i do they are all you know are completely in control by me and krishna is supreme lord so his birth and his activities are also transcendental because he himself is transcendental just by knowing that arjuna you can come back to me never to return to this material world again many people write autobiographies many people write biographies we read when i came to iskon like you know 13 14 years back i i still remember i was reading this uh, biography of uh, Sam Walton, you know Walmart. So I was I, I was you know a student of MBA and all that, and I read about Jack Welch, and then I was reading Sam Walton, his uh, I don't remember what autobiography or biography. I read many biographies and autobiographies. It appears very interesting, very interesting with the life history, you know, like like Hitler's autobiography, then there was Lee Iacocca, and, and so many other people. but then one devotee when i came i started chanting few rounds then one devotee came he said prabhu you are reading very nice try reading about sila prabhupad his biography and he gave me this smaller version of prabhupad biography and you see the interest the 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 thrill in prabhupad's biography is amazing so the activities you know people we, they want to talk about themselves or someone right but you see their activities they are all controlled they are not independent and by reading if you know someone may read a lot of autobiographies and biographies by reading what what benefit we get nothing we only become envious sometime we we take inspiration i'm talking about materialistic people take inspiration from autobiographies and biography but most of the time they are envious the foundation of material is envy but krishna's uh, uh, biography or autobiography whatever is this shrimad bhagavatam the past times of krishna they destroy the envy within our heart rather for shrimad bhagavatam it is said it is for the devotees who are nirmatsaranam who are devoid of envy this bhagavatam they can relish this bhagavatam hmm? paramhamsa devotees paramhamsa samhita shrimad bhagavatam but still we although we are conditioned soul even when we are reading we are getting so much benefit and we can relish this past time so wonderful hmm? and now after two days the month of kartik is starting the most wonderful for all devotees 
one of the most favorite months for all devotees and so many pastimes of krishna so many pastimes of krishna took place in this month of kartik the whole month devotees will be discussing about damodar leela and uh, you know divan radha kund appear in this month of kartik so many different leelas they'll discuss they'll visit different holy places in vrindavan if someone they can't visit they'll talk about vrindavan so krishna's past times are like nectar even conditioned soul can relish it works in two ways for conditioned soul they get cured of their disease and they can little bit relish and for the pure devotees they don't have any disease of material world but they relish krishna's past times they relish krishna's past times newer and newer past times of you no know, past time may be same but the realizations the relish is all new and new every day every moment because krishna is transcendental krishna is supremely independent everything is done is on is on his own will so krishna appearing as a hog as vara avatar or in the form of horse or in the forms of swan any form he appears on his own will so doesn't matter which form he can take any form he likes that's like a uh, like a like a play thing for krishna when varadev appeared because uh, mother earth was uh, you know thrown inside the water by ranaksha so brahma was meditating and from brahma's nose a small thumb like creature came and even brahma got bewildered what is this coming from my nose even brahma didn't realize what is coming from my nose only when there is this thumb like creature he started expanding 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 and unlimited expanded then the brahma and saptrishis and others could realize that he is lord vishnu that is how krishna is independent even if krishna is here in dwarka krishna was there in dwarka udhav is saying to vidura that dwarka was is so unfortunate krishna is living with them but they don't know that he is the supreme lord what a misfortune but that was krishna's way krishna does not want to reveal so that is also independence krishna is standing in front of us but he will not reveal we cannot understand rather on the contrast a conditioned soul is completely conditioned and completely controlled and the form is given krishna takes the form we are given the form krishna decides who will be my mother who will be my father we don't decide krishna decides on his own beauty his own form his own opulence his place of birth his past times we just go like like the time passes and we are just you know like the straw in the waves and the river is just flowing you would have heard this uh, many people they they say that you know i take the life as it comes i take the life as it comes i face the life as it comes yeah what else can you do anyways and these people think that we are we are big uh, you know smart intelligent people and we give such kind of answers many people say like it anyways what you can do you have to face life as it comes you cannot do anything so better face it they cannot even face it only a devotee only a sadhaka whose philosophy is uh, very uh, clear who understands all this siddhanta he can face the life as it is because he knows why things are happening he knows why he is suffering he knows why this happiness come in his life and then prabhat talking about mayavadi this mayavadi thing that 
uh, Krishna is taking different forms is Maya because he is taking temporary form first of all Krishna's none of the Krishna's form is temporary Krishna appears as Narsinga Krishna appears as in spiritual world he does not appear like Narsinga he is like Lord Vishnu with four hands his name is Narsinga in spiritual world why he has to appear like half man half lion that's only in material world but even material world is eternal and Krishna's Leela somewhere or the other on one planet or the other in one universe or the other is eternally going on Srila Prabhupada writes in 4th canto of Bhagavatam that Pandavas always eternally reside in material world they don't go to spiritual world imagine what is the position of Pandavas we are desperate to go to spiritual world Pandavas always in material world always but eternally because they are with Krishna they are actually in eternal spiritual world only material world is also eternal it's playfully so once one devotee asks Prabhupada Prabhupada why did Krishna created material world and Prabhupada said for enjoyment and this devotee was like blissful very smiley well, new, you know, new devotees Krishna has created this material world for enjoyment and immediately thought so my enjoyment he smiled Prabhupada could understand then Prabhupada added for Krishna's enjoyment so this material world also for Krishna's enjoyment is Krishna's playground because Krishna is transcendental wherever he goes his spiritual world it's Vrindavan and this uh, Mayavadis they say that Krishna takes the form and he is he takes the form within the control of Maya when Krishna takes any form para Brahm uh, where this Brahma Satyam Jagat Mithya so when this Brahma para Brahm when he takes the form in the material world he actually is uh, entangled by modes Avajananti maam moda manushim tanu maashritam Krishna says they are moda because they think I am manushya I have taken manushim tanu maashritam I have taken shelter of this human body so it's not like that and very logical our acharyas have put if he is parabrahm how can he be controlled by his own energy? Maya. How can Krishna, who is master of Maya, Maya, Dakshana, Prakriti, Suyate, Sachara, Chara, Devi, Aisha, Guna, Mama, Maya, Durata. Krishna is saying it is my Maya, it's my energy. I This energy is working under my supervision, my direction. How can Krishna, the boss, the supreme boss, can actually be controlled by the subordinate? Doesn't fit into logic. Then people say, oh, you people worship Krishna and Shiva and Ganesha and Brahma and Indra, all, they are like human forms because you are human beings, so you form, you have God like human. So in the dog community, they have, you know, God like dog. In the elephant community, they have elephant, elephant like God. It's not like that. It is not that because we are human beings, we have two hands, we have two eyes, we have two nostrils, two ears, one mouth and all that. So we have, uh, you know, thought on our own uh, whimsical platform thought of some form of God which is Krishna it is the other way around Krishna is like that the way he is and he has given human beings a form which looks like him So that is, it's not that, you, know, you would have heard this argument, oh, you worship Krishna because, you know, Krishna has two hands and all that, you have made the form out of your own concoction because you are human being. No. And because Krishna is like that, Krishna made us looking similar to me, so that we can practice bhakti and connect with Krishna. So because there are so many unlimited expansions avatars of Krishna 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gives a analogy. He says like the waves in the ocean, they are unlimited. You see 24 hours the waves are there in the ocean. So similarly unlimited incarnations. Now Narada Muni is saying meditate on the past time. Now when Dhruva was there not many incarnations of Lord had appeared. In future also they will appear. It's like a circle. They keep on appearing. So then he says uh, So Narada Muni is saying, you should meditate on the past tense of the Lord. Now obviously Prabhupada focuses more on uh, chanting, but nonetheless, these past times also help. I was just giving a class in the afternoon, I was talking to some group of students, they are all devotees. I was telling them that, you know, sometimes we are working outside, they said, Prabhuji, we are working outside, we get sometimes bewildered seeing the form of, you know, the opposite sex. So how? I said, then what we can do, we are chanting anyways. Chanting is very powerful. But we are still on the, you know, what you are reading, eh? 10 offenses. Our chanting is more, you know, offensive chanting. So we are not yet clear. So then I said, then we can meditate on different pastimes of Lord. Huh? Krishna Leela, Ram Leela, Chaitanya Leela, even Prabhupada Leela I was talking like. If you just read Prabhupada Leela Amrit, you see, my Lord, what kind of adventurous, you know, um, life of Prabhupada and what is happening around him. So thrilling. Immediately our consciousness will go and get stuck there. And then we read different incarnations of Krishna, we read and hear. And today is also Prabhupada saying, Shramanam Kirtanam. So read and hear about Krishna and different incarnations, their past tense, our mind will get stuck. Again and again, again and again we have to do reading and hearing. Not by once. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. And even Vaishnava songs by our Acharyas. So beautiful uh, songs. So deep meaning. All the scriptures are in, given in simple language in the form of songs, bhajan. Anyone is getting distracted lot because of material things, he should sing or learn bhajans and keep, you know, singing all through the day. They have deep meanings. So this also helps us. Why Prabhupada open temple? and install deities. He should have just opened temple, some brahmacharya asham, gram, grahasasham, okay, there is a hall, put one candle and all devotees chant Hare Krishna and go and preach. Why? Why deities? Deity worship is not recommended in this age. I mean, it's not banned. It's not recommended for this yuga. But why Prabhupada gave that? You just imagine your own temple, whichever you are connected, and you imagine the temple complex without the deities. It looks so... Empty, shallow. Deities are the uh, center of attraction. And all the activities in the temple are surrounding and around deities only. Why Prabhupada gave? His Holiness Jayapataka Swami Maharaj was asked this question. So he replied, long back, he replied that we are deeply Mayavadis. We are very deeply impersonalist. Staying in this material world, we have become impersonalist. By worshipping the deities, by looking, by observing the aratis, by serving deities, by cooking for them, by washing the vessel, by washing the temple hall, all these activities will remove this effect and covering, thick layer of covering of impersonalism. And the real nature, which is Nitya Krishna Das, that will come. And so easy to connect with form. I mean, definitely first is name and name only will reveal the form. But it becomes very easy. 
many devotees in iskon have connected uh, have been connected to iskon by by books but many got connected seeing the beautiful form so many people come they see the form and so much blessings so sri prabhu gave different past times and different temples different deities and all deities have different names one person was asking you have all the deities all over the world and every where krishna has a different name but rather than he same name even rather than he prabhat could have given but just to make but every deity is given different name and names of krishna are based on past times krishna does whatever activity that is called past time and based on the past time it be, he gets the name so that is why it is very easy for us to hook our consciousness in krishna by reading and hearing different past times and that's what Ach- like damodar mantra is coming after two days you will be singing this uh, damodar ashtakam and he says this satyavat muni i don't want anything i just want to always see your form of damodar tied with this ukal by mother yashoda i don't want liberation even this uh, in chaitanya leela there was one devotee who was that kola vecha sridhar aaprabhu saying what do you want he said you birth after birth let me be in material world i don't mind but you come to my shop i want to see you so different forms different past times of lord imagine in our conditioning state when we read and hear these past times uh, we become so thrilled and it gives gives a very deep impression on our consciousness what about those devotees who are completely pure and when they hear these past times that's why when gadadhar pandit he used to read bhagavatam he couldn't read bhagavatam because the moment he starts reading bhagavatam the tears will roll down his eyes and cheeks and fall on the pages of bhagavatam it was very difficult for him to read especially after chaitanya mahaprabhu left very difficult for him he can't read the moment he starts bhagavatam he starts crying so this is the uh, very important we should read and hear about different past times of lord and bhagavatam has all that that means read bhagavatam read chaitanya charitamrita and then prabhupada says about chanting because right now we are chanting 16 rounds every day from from years we can still somehow technically scientifically logically and philosophically we can try to understand some past times why prabhupada is not encouraging because many people they just read and especially das leela and then become they are already mayavadis and sahijas and they go deep in the hellish consciousness that's a proper thing first you chant naam then roop then gun and then leela it will manifest it will be revealed in the heart so that's a proper thing you chant hari krishna that is recommended in an, uh, that is recommended in the scriptures for us so when we chant we get some purification and after few years it's not that prabhupada is saying that we should not read bhagavatam we should not read about different past times no but chanting is most important so we chant our rounds and the first thing prabhupada says the of all the instructions of spiritual master the first instruction which we should fulfill is chanting our prescribed number of rounds the first thing we do in morning it's not that morning we wake up we take bath and read for bhagavatam 2 hours and then somewhere in the day time we chant that's not recommended for us recommended chant first and then definitely read also 
Prabhupada said that one place read one hour Bhagavatam, minimum, one hour books. Some places Prabhupada said you, every day, everyone, all these con devotees, they should read two to three hours. Where are we able to read two to three hours? At least one hour we should read. It will, you know, hook our consciousness in Krishna Leela. And even though living in this material world, dealing with materialistic people, in office, in, in school, in college, our consciousness in the back of the mind will be hooked up by those pastimes of Krishna. And then very easily we can connect everything with Krishna, everything. Like Prabhupada could connect this uh, airport in Chicago. You might be knowing the airport in Chicago name O'Hare. And Prabhupada said O'Hare. He immediately remembers Srimati Radharani. Because his consciousness is completely hooked in Krishna Leela. He could immediately connect it. When he saw in Washington, he saw this uh, White House and he says, Oh, your American capital is very beautiful. We should have a temple like this, like these domes in Mayapur. And that's why you see Mayapur temple is coming. Looks like, you know, White House, the domes. Even the dome is in a Vedic architecture, but Prabhupada took the idea from White House. He could see everything in connection to Krishna. So by Naam, by Rupa, by Gona, by Leela, and somehow the other, by hook or by crook, let's hook our consciousness, connect our consciousness more and more, deeper and deeper to Krishna. And then there is no problem. Whether you are in material, then we will come to this stage, you know, Mama Janmani Janmani. Whether I am in material world or spiritual world doesn't matter. Just give me a service. Rupa Goswami says, like a miser, a miser businessman, he earns so much money, still he is always, he is never satisfied, he wants more money. He is still not satisfied. You give him more. You give entire wealth of Indra. He is not satisfied. He wants more. He is never satisfied. Shri Rupa Goswami is praying, My Lord, when will I come to the stage when I will never be satisfied by chanting the holy name? There is a different kind of dissatisfaction. Because once, once our consciousness becomes purer, we chant and chant and chant and never to be satiated. Never to be satisfied. We want to chant more. Rupa Goswami says, what this two ears and one tongue can do? I want billions of ears to hear the holy name. And billions of tongues to chant the holy name. So somehow or the other, let us work and get connected to Krishna Consciousness. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Shri Madhavagatam ki jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, that was Pranam Prabhuji, all good is to play. Prabhuji, I had one question, can I ask? Yes, sir. Uh, Prabhuji, it is related to uh, Dhruv Maharaj pastime. So, uh, like Dhruv Maharaj got angry because you know, all that incident that happened and then he went to search for God. So similarly, can we, can we also uh, think like that, that if we get offended in some way, we do Tivra Bhakti and, uh, you know, and then ultimately, in, instead of finding the goal, uh, for which we got offended, we rather end up, you know, uh, having more devotion to Krishna. So is that okay, or we cannot compare yes, that yes. Guru Maharaj pastime yes. with ourselves? All, all the, all the negative situations in your life, you should see it is coming as the karma, and you should turn those negative situations for positive. They like someone's humiliate you, some devotees humiliate you, then it's our own karma. But then take that in a positive way and you reflect, anyways what I have, he has humiliated, actually he has humiliated less. 
i have more uh, disqualifications but if dhruv maharaj would have thought so like that, that is how we can connect but tivra bhakti is more than what he said tivra bhakti is very important nice right but probably if dhruv maharaj would have thought like that oh it's my karma like that you know he would have never gone to the forest and uh, did tapasya see it's not that he didn't know because he he was he knew that that's what his mother told that what can be done when dhruva came to his real mother she said that what can be done your father loves your step mother more than me that that means that is karma but what you can do is you if you want bigger things you go to vishnu i'm not saying that you you accept karma and just be you know okay nothing doing no tivrana bhakti yoga has to be done but we have to also understand that you no know, whatever is happening wrong in my life it is my karma sometime what will happen if you will not accept the karma part and tivrana tivrana you will you will run around here and there but eventually we may see that you know uh, we are still dissatisfied because sometimes what happens our karma comes uh, our bad karma the fruits comes continuously for some time okay yeah, okay once or twice something happen one or two days no problem but every day for one month two months negative things are coming we have to understand that why this is coming and then based on that you do tivrana bhakti yoga or the bhav we cannot just say that don't oh, no, let me close my eyes to karma and if i if i know that this is karma i'll be as you all do you that what complacent i will become very complacent no here the point is not about complacency when you use this word tivrana there is no scope of complacency and this does not mean when you understand the concept of karma you become complacent all our scriptures all the acharyas they know what all the all the people you know like only 50 years back if you go everyone in india knew this is karma still people talk about this is karma what can be that does not mean that we become complacent just to become tivrana we cannot uh, you know bypass the philosophy so accept the philosophy and then do tivrana bhakti yoga am i am i am i going on the right path is this what your question is what i'm trying to give answer yes yes prabhu i am uh, i am able to understand uh, half part just other half part i want to clarify so we yes. whoever is offended us we should not be envious or try to be in a challenging mode but rather do uh, tiri with tivrana bhakti thinking that you know we have to uh, because it is of our karma right you know shall i so, tell you one secret yes yes please. i'll tell you one secret we try to work on the quality i don't want to be envious i don't want to be lusty i don't want to be greedy i don't want to you know act uh, negatively but these are all consequences of our own consciousness this is nothing but the reflection of our own consciousness So rather than thinking, oh, I am very envious. Let me become non-envious. You cannot become non-envious just by eating one pill. There is no pill in America. I hope you take one pill from the medical store and know oh, I am non-envious. Take another pill. I am not greedy now. No, it is our consciousness which is reflecting. The question which you are asking, this is nothing but the reflection of your consciousness at that moment. So whatever we speak, it is our own consciousness. so what we have to do bhakti by sadhana bhakti we have to go and purify the consciousness and rest don't worry about the qualities it's not that we are envious we are lusty we are greedy we are uh, we are angry and in 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 one month or two months or six months i can you know overcome no it's it's very deep the consciousness is contaminated so let us purify the consciousness the very beautiful lecture prabhu was saying in bhagavad gita class he said that krishna's responsibility is to protect you it's not your responsibility to protect you even from anartha your responsibility is to is to please krishna by practice of sadhana bhakti you please krishna by practice of sadhana bhakti krishna will do his part of protecting you this is called dharma rakshati rakshata you protect dharma dharma will protect you so rather than working on the qualities we work on the 
purification of consciousness by Navvida Bhakti. Once the consciousness gradually gets purified, 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 your behavior, the words, the selection of your words, your anarthas, the tendency to often, all will go down. Your chanting will become, you know, more uh, pakka. Your morning program will, it, everything will work, just work on the consciousness. We work on the quality, that is wrong. That's not the way to approach. It's like, you know, consciousness is the root. Because consciousness got contaminated when we came to material world. So we have to purify that, that is the root. We don't go to every fruit and leaf and branch, we just go to the root. And if the consciousness is contaminated, and a person is a sadhaka is trying to externally behave non-envious, he cannot behave non-envious for a long time. He will exhibit his envy because the consciousness has that element of envy. The foundation has that. You know, it's like if, if you have a tree, which is a, which is a, a tamarind tree. It's a tamarind tree. You can purchase few kilos of mangoes from outside and go and tie the mangoes with tamarind tree. So those mangoes will also rot and the original fruit of the tree, tamarind, will come out because the foundation, the root is tamarind. So if the consciousness is contaminated, somewhere or the other it will get reflected. We are trying to cover it superficially, it will only frustrate us. So rather than covering superficially, we should obviously behave in a way, in a Vaishnava way, following the Vaishnava Sadacha. But we should also parallelly, Prabhupada has given us the process to purify the consciousness. You see the morning program, evening program, everything, <coughs> purify the consciousness. And when the conscious, once the consciousness is purified, then everything else will come. You don't have to work separately. Okay. <coughs> Thank you, Prabhu. Hi, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. I have, I have two questions, Prabhu. Yeah, yeah, first I can go with. Yeah, initially, I mean, when the class started, you... In, I mean, you told that, so, I mean, uh, uh, we cannot concentrate on the form of the Lord and then we have to, we have to chant Hare Krishna. I mean, maybe, maybe I heard correctly or not, Prabhu. So, is that, 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 if you are able to, I mean, concentrate on the name, form of the Lord, so we don't need to, to chanting? No, Prabhu, I didn't mean that. See, the main thing was that we have to do both because we are not perfect chanters. Our chanting is not perfect. Our absorption in Krishna Katha is also not perfect. We come in front of deities. It is not that the no, Ashrudhara, the tears are flowing from our eyes like rivers, Ganga and Yamuna. We are not perfect in any of the system. So we do little, little all Navavida Bhakti. So we, we, if you can perfectly just chant, then you just sit in one place of the world and you chant. You don't need anything else. Because we cannot do that, then we have services, then we have Mangala Arti, we have deity worship, we have book distribution, we have read different books. Why Prabhupada wrote so many different books? He could have just given, okay, take Bhagavad Gita. Obviously, the another part is variety, is mother of, you know, enjoyment of Krishna consciousness, and all about variety. But also, that our mind will not get fixed on one thing. Is jumping like a monkey from one branch to another. So we are not perfect in chanting, we are not perfect in deity worship, we are not perfect in doing anything. So then do little, little, little everything, it will support each other and somehow we'll proceed further. Uh, oh, it's good, bro. So, yeah, it's good, bro, understood. And then, yeah, next question, Prabhu, suppose, yeah, yeah, devotees are us supremely independent. So, yeah, on that, so suppose, I mean, whether do we want to the, want the good or bad, if the will, I mean, if the, if the Krishna sanctioned, then only it happens, right? How we can understand that the devotees are supremely independent? See, when we talk about devotees, when we say word devotee, it means pure devotee. Yes. It does not mean practicing sadhakas like us. We don't come in the category of devotees. 
in one way yes but when prabhupada writes in the third chapter of bhagavad gita when we use this word devotee it means pure devotee so pure devotee is actually and now you see this relationship between krishna and pure devotee pure devotee is completely controlled by krishna and krishna is completely controlled by pure devotee mm. yes you heard both yes yes so now which is true yeah both are true bro yeah because the consciousness is merged the body is not merged the soul is not merged with super soul but the consciousness of a pure devotee and consciousness of krishna is merged so even the thought which will come in pure devotee's heart is not different from the thought which will come in krishna's heart because the consciousness is same that how it works good bro thank you bro are Hare Krishna Prabhu then uh, thank you for the beautiful uh, Prabhu I had a very uh, basic question when you were talking about uh, Krishna leaving a material body to de- to bewilder the atheists is, is it there in some commentary or something how do I find it yeah it is there uh, you read 11th canto I hope you will find there because I think I read in the 11th canto there is one chapter Krishna yes you read, you read uh, there are two chapters the first chapter lot of commentaries of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarathi Chakur mm-hmm. about Krishna's uh, disappearance and Krish- Dwarka Vasi's disappearance Bhakti Siddhanta Chakur he, he goes in detail and the last chapter of 11th canto is about disappearance of Krishna there in the commentaries you will find that in the Acharya commentary Mm-hmm. and prabhupad also in many of his lectures he says this. i quoted prabhupad i said prabhupad says in one of the lectures that if krishna can create 8.4 million species of life and forms why cannot krishna create one for himself krishna left body just to bewilder the atheists this is one of the lecture of prabhupad oh so lecture the folio yeah thank you thank you okay it's already ಪಾಂಡವಾಸ್ಟ್ yeah so prabhu ji like uh, means how come it is possible pandavas don't go to it's not possible you tell me that means we are saying there is something which is not possible for krishna ha <laughs> uh-huh. it takes time to digest what is krishna's eternal form in the spiritual world in goloka vrindavan um Krishna Sham Sundar 16 year old boy yeah. Yes What about what about uh, Nandalal Bal Gopal uh, Baby Krishna Baby Krishna where is he He is in Goloka Yeah but Goloka Krishna is from a 16 year old boy <laughs> yeah so krishna is mysterious krishna is activity we should just accept and believe why krishna did that at least devotee should not ask that is yeah. how krishna works any else anyone else for question prabhu ji hare krishna please accept me hare krishna prabhu ji uh so we so just uh, continue on and uh, that question which you asked uh, my understanding was uh, you know there are so many different uh, universes within the material world and uh, krishna leela about uh, as a baby krishna and everything is always happening simultaneously at some point 
some places mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so uh, so the uh, i'm thinking the answer to the earlier question was uh, the uh, you know the past times of being a child is in uh, in material world not in spiritual world mm-hmm. is that correct to you what 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 was your last point can you repeat yeah so the uh, <coughs> uh the past times of being a baby a child and uh, uh, a baby krishna or uh, you know mm-hmm. uh, all those uh, past times they are all always happening in material world not in the spiritual yes. world yes all okay. see, krishna is there in spiritual world also obviously but when you you see the the past times like you know demons coming in krishna leela they on that past times only happen on the earthly planets in different universes in the golokurinda one krishna also there in balagopal form but yashoda is there anxiety is also there see yashoda love is exhibited in terms of anxiety so anxiety of yashoda is there in the in the eternal spiritual world also but they're not demons how can a demon come you know in spiritual world how can agasur bakasur putana sakatasur all these will come they are not existing they are existing only here like narsing dev is there in the spiritual world but he didn't catch up was not there he is the jay vijay form so demons are not there but in the eternal goloka vrindavan also krishna has bal leela but the main leela is obviously kaishwara leela he is 16 year old and few months that is his form then when you go there you can understand more and email it to me also the details with photographs i'll send you my email id <laughs> thank you roji relation okay speed stop okay, here please stop here thank yes sir thank you for coming here Thank you very much, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. 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 Thank